coming up, to quote from a Run DMC song, you talk too much, you never shut up. I said you talk too much. Homeboy, you never shut up. Anyways. And then they go on to the song to say, you talk about people you don't even know and talk about places you never go. You talk about your girl from head to toe. I said your mouth's moving fast and your brain's moving slow. So opening up to others without dumping your emotions to them and talking too much. Two different things we're going to talk about here on the period and the Potras here. I'm King of Podcasts. Let's think, thanks for listening in. So in the story, they talk about how, first of all, trauma dumping. It's either something you've done or something that's been done to you. The term can be problematic for a few reasons. One, it may discourage people from talking about things they might do well to talk about it. Something we've all been encouraged to do in recent years. And that pop psychology has often misunderstood the word trauma to the point where some people have said it's lost its meaning. To where even TikTok now has an area called trauma talk when sharing trauma online becomes unhealthy. So trauma refers to specifically a highly personal response to an event or events that threaten a person's life and or bodily integrity. Involves feeling shaken to our core with sense of being unable to control what happens to us. According to Divine Love Salvador, a clinical psychologist. She says everyone has emotional wounds that are painful and distressing, but not all emotional wounds are traumatic. These wounds may be difficult, but they don't necessarily threaten one's sense of safety in the world. Trauma is difficult to talk about, so people who struggle with it do not talk about it frequently. But there are some that if you are willing to go ahead and listen to trauma dumping, you might actually hear some of this. Or, as I might call it, listening to someone's emotional baggage. But I think with women, it's a very good thing to have. And for guys, I don't know what you could do about it, but there should be a vessel, some place where you can go to let some of that stuff go. Not because you need somebody to help you with it, but just to have somebody to go ahead and listen, and or at least just get it out of your system. And that's what it comes down to. So trauma dumping, they talk about connotes, connotes that the person is doing it is caught up with their in their needs unaware of their impact on others so all this is not to say you shouldn't be talking about difficult emotions traumatic or not it's just about how when or to whom you do it and that you need to practice self-awareness recognize how dumping affects others define and respect boundaries and remember who you are beyond your pains so Salvador encourages people to get to know themselves beyond their achievements and pains and by asking questions like, who am I outside of what I do and what I've done in my life? Who is this person who is in pain? How have I tried to protect myself? How my self-protection shaped my relationships in life? But some people need a little bit of that dumping, but it doesn't need to be something where if you're dumping that trauma out to somebody and it's not doing you any good and you're not improving yourself by getting it out of your system. Well, then what happens to you then? That's the problem there. You got to ask yourself, what are you doing now? Unless you feel like you just need to have that chance to talk about your trauma to anybody that'll listen to you without really getting any real results from doing that. Which is why I think some people, when they talk too much, monologues and the dialogues, it happens a lot. And it happens with people that definitely do feel they need to have the, their themselves heard, attention getting. Or that there's things that are going on. So, res reasons for over talking be can be primarily intrinsic. Some are naturally talkative, devotedly self absorbed, or oblivious of the imbalance between talking and listening. And others are primarily situational and can be identified and managed. So, there are seven strategies for moving forward a more satisfying and interactive flow of conversation. One is restructuring the social environment. So groups of more than six often don't allow people to some people to contribute, at least not for very long. Breaking a larger group into smaller conversations of two, three, and four work better for equitable engagement. Then staying thematic. That we identify themes and respond to them, sometimes with an associated event or a personal story that addresses the theme. 
Shifting one's status, one possible reason for verbal excess is that people perceive themselves as having higher status than the others in the group due to more expertise or more uniquely distinctive experiences in general. Then there's reducing redundancy, which there are some people that tell the same stories over and over. And linguists distinguish between deep structure, the ideas to be expressed, and surface structure, the actual words expressing those ideas. We normally oscillate between too much information and not enough, trying to find the sweet spot of just enough. Too much information and listeners become bored. Not enough, and they're confused. So we need to be able to politely affirm what we already know and then add to the conversation from our own experiences. Then changing patterns is the other part of this. We should pay attention to to desirable behavior providing reinforcement when the talk of a person is judicious and concise. And we also need to be more direct. We tell the person about the difficulty we have over talking by focusing on how it affects us, placing boundaries on the other person's excessive output rather than criticizing. We might ask, can we have equal time? And welcoming necessary expression that it's helpful to let the person decompress and adjust to the adult social environment. After listening for a while, we may want to comment sympathetically about the stresses of their day and gracefully introduce new topics. And then there's final last words. We don't want to shut down the talkative person. We want to restore the balance. And if the person is not reading our frustration or doesn't acknowledge it, we should ask ourselves if the interaction is worth the continuing frustration. And there's that part of the conversation to take. So a couple of the things that you can take from that. That if you're opening the door for somebody to be talkative, or you're in a conversation where the person is being overly talkative, about to take in. And also, if you can't be the one that doesn't get to say anything at all, or you want to stay quiet, because then you're just suffer compu- confusion or mystery and things like that. So there's got to be some proper balance. And radio, it's something that is quite a learned technique to do that, to make sure I don't over talk myself, which is where I'm going to cut this right here because I don't want to say too much. <laughs> because if I do, I might just say about how. I am, much like all of you, the praise and the botrus.